All right, so that concludes our subsetting uh, lecture and labs, and I'm going to let Ava start her data summarization. Yeah, we've only got a few minutes, so um, these are just some thoughts for you to ruminate on uh, or have sweet dreams about data summarization or something tonight. Um, and we'll do the bulk of it tomorrow. Okay, so I'm just going to load the summarization. Um, so one reason we might be interested in summarization, this is like basically like taking our data and trying to make some inferences about it. Um, you know, things like mean, you know, our data, like if we just look at it, you know, all the numbers, all the raw data, that doesn't make much sense. And so what we can do with summarization is actually try to start drawing some inference from our data. Okay, so this is sort of not to overwhelm you, but these are some of the things that, you know, I'll explain a little bit more about later um, that there are functions that do uh, math can do analyses on you know, a vector or can do analyses on a column of your data. So some of the standard ones, like I said, mean takes the mean of your column or your vector, standard deviation, SD um, takes the standard deviation of X, have to be careful that sometimes in different computing, uh, you know, Excel or, or SAS, like it's always called something different, but in R it's SD. Um, median takes the median of X. Um, quantile takes, uh, gives you a couple of different things. So it gives you the minimum, the maximum, and it also gives you the 25, the 50, and the 75% quartile. Um, so that can kind of be interesting to look at your distribution of your data. The range gives two values. It gives the minimum and it gives the maximum. Sum is gonna give the sum of all of your, um, of all the items in your column or your vector. And all of these, this is really important, all of these have this option. So this argument um, for na.rm, and this allows you to exclude missing data. So if you, are trying to take the mean of a vector of data and you have a couple NAs in there, R is not trying to assume what those values are because you know statistically those could be giant numbers that are missing um, and R doesn't want to mislead you. And so you have to specify, okay, well, I'm, I feel comfortable dropping these NAs um, from this column I'm trying to take the mean of, for example. Um, you can also do some transformations. So these are pretty straightforward. Um, log, uh, which is the base E transformation. You can also do different bases, so log two, log 10, and you can do square root of, you know, your vector of numbers. And uh, just really quick, so let me clear this. Just to show you really quickly how this works. So I have a vector of numbers called X, and then I can just do mean, or I can do median. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Those also work on columns as long as they are numeric. Um, so I'll uh, probably stop there just to give you a flavor of what's coming up. So let's use uh, some data sets just to get familiar with some of these functions. So we'll go ahead and load in the um, J, uh, JHUR library and just take a look, use head to take a look at this data set JHU cars. And you can see there's you know, different, uh, different types of cars here. So that's you know, text, descriptive data, um, but then we have lots of numeric data here. So we have miles per gallon, number of cylinders, um, horsepower, some of this other stuff if you're uh, big car aficionados, maybe you know what it is. <laughs> All right, so statistical summarization, um, just as a reminder, this dollar sign can help us refer to a specific column in a data frame or a tibble. 
So if we want to take the mean of uh, the JHU cars uh, HP, the horsepower column, um, we can just do that really easily with the mean function. Same thing with quantile, uh, which is actually going to give us a little bit more detail. Mentioned yesterday, it gives you uh, the basically the quartiles in or the quantiles basically in 25% increments. And so it can kind of give you a sense of the distribution of your data. But again, it gives you a little bit more than mean. Median, pretty straightforward. Again, gives you the median of a specific column. And the cool thing about quantiles, it ac actually has this option um, for an argument probs. So if you wanna say, okay, well, I wanna know the, um, the 60th percentile. Um, so you can give it in a uh, decimal form um, and you can actually get just one number. Um, if you want, you can also pass a vector here if you wanted you know, the 5% and 95%, for example. Okay, and as uh, I mentioned yesterday, uh, many of these functions have uh, additional inputs regarding missing data. So they have this option or this, this argument, na.rm, um, and this allows you to remove any NAs because if we take a vector, you know, this could be a column as well. Um, so I've named this, this particular vector x and tried to take the mean of x, but I end up getting this response NA. That's not super helpful. Um, and that's because there's this NA in this data set, so, or the, in this vector. So if I want to you know, tell R, you know, I'm okay with that, I can ignore that number. I feel like it, you know, we just didn't collect data there. It's not some you know, giant number that's gonna mess up my data. Um, then I can pass this NARM option to mean, and I can actually get a number. And it's, it's not like doing anything, imputing a number here. It's really only taking those, um, those numbers that are you know, actually not NA. And you can do the same thing with quantile, use that na.rm equals true argument. Okay, so there's a couple other handy functions maybe to think about. Um, so if you have data with a lot of numbers in it, like the one we were just looking at, uh, you can do some things to kind of summarize across columns or rows. Um, so the row means is exactly what it sounds like. It is taking the mean across um, uh, basically all the items in the row. And maybe counterintuitively, it can actually be used to create a new column. So you're, some, you're taking the average of everything in that row and you could potentially add in some more information with that. And same thing with column means, basically adding a, or uh, taking the average of everything in a particular or in, in your columns. And works row sums, column sums work the same way. Um, and then this last function, I think is super useful and can tell us um, just a lot of information, information about NAs, information about the, um, the quartiles uh, for data frames and, and especially for quantitative information. So if you have a lot of numbers, it's kind of useful. Okay, so let's walk through how some of these work. And so to do that, let's open up a slightly different data set. So. Um, we'll do the TB, uh, tuberculosis incidence data. Um, we can use uh, Read Excel to look at that. And so you can download this into your workspace um, using the URL, or if you wanna just use the JHUR package, you can just use this read TB, um, you know, name it as a new variable. And then you can take a look at the columns for TB. So we've got this really long column name here, but then it looks like we have columns referring to you know, incidence data from different years. Okay, so let's start to play around with this data set a little bit. 
Um, let's use the rename function in dplyr. Um, this, <laughs> this column name is super messy. There's a lot of spaces, there's special symbols, there's parentheses and things like that. Um, so let's really quickly rename it. Um, so we can use the pipe to do that. We'll take the data set is TB and use the pipe. And then we can just go ahead and use that rename function. And we don't need, remember when we use the pipe, we don't need to um, explicitly state the data set right here. So we can just jump to the new column that we wanna rename. So we wanna use the name country and we're replacing this, uh, this kind of messy column. And uh, something really cool that you can do with rename Let's say I'm going to do rename country. I can actually hit tab and I've already renamed it. So it's going to go up to my lecture here and rerun. Give me one second. Just rerun this. Okay. I want to rename the country column. I can just hit tab and it will pull up the different columns for me. So this can be really handy if you want to make sure you don't have uh, you know, typos or anything. Okay. So we've renamed it. We have this nice column country now. Okay, and let's say we want to get some summary statistics based on, you know, the, um, the data that we have for different years. Um, you know, we've, we've got a lot of um, rows that indicate different countries, but let's say we just want to know some overall statistics. We can use this summarize function. It does, you know, exactly what it, it sounds like it does. It creates a summary of data. So we'll take the data set here, use the pipe and use this summarize function. And so the way this works, you know, we're creating a new column. So let's call this new column mean 2006. And we can see here what it's actually doing. It's taking this function mean, it's taking the average of the 2006 column while removing any NAs, okay? so. You know, we don't really have an idea of what countries might be missing data, but hopefully this will be a pretty close approximation of the mean. Um, well, to the median for 2007, so we're just adding an additional um, summary statistic here. You know, we can just place a comma and do another one down below. So the median of 2007 uh, with a little bit of a typo. <laughs> um, and so you just use the median function the column you want to work on, and also specifying to remove NAs. And so one thing that happens if we don't actually tell, summarize what we want to rename that column, if we just give it the you know, summarization function, if we drop down here, it's, it gives us this really ugly column name. Uh, so while it doesn't give you an error, it is a little bit hard to read. Um, and so it's nice to have this ability to rename things and summarize. And so after we run all of this, we get a nice output tibble that tells us some of the summary statistics from the data set. So mean 2006, uh, tuberculosis incidence is um, 135, and the median in 2007 is 53, the median in 2004 is 56, so just a little bit higher. And um, you can use the across function with summarize to summarize across all columns of your data, but that one's a little trickier to use. Um, and uh, you can click the link here to the documentation if you're interested in using that. You've got like tons of numeric data and you really wanna explore that, uh, please feel free. Okay, um, so call means and row means, uh, since they are performing a you know, summary statistic, they need to work on numeric data. So we don't want any categorical or, 
or descriptive data um, if we're going to use these functions. So let's take a subset because remember we have that column country. We cannot do um, call means or row means on that. So let's take a subset of our data. We'll use this helper function here to select all of the columns that start with one from TB. So I'll assign that to a new variable averages. And if I do call means on averages, I get the means across all of those columns. So you see, we still have those same column names as before, but this is super convenient. It allows us to look at all of them together. Okay, and for row means, like I said, pretty intuitive. It's taking the average across all of the rows and we can actually make this into a new column in our data set. So if we're doing all the years that start with one, you know, 1990 through 1999, we can call that something informative. Use the dollar sign again to indicate that it's the column we're referring to. And this is just a little shorthand to kind of show us what that looks like below. So we can have our country and our new column that we made. Pretty cool. Okay, and like I said, summary can give us a rough snapshot. Um, it gives us a ton of information. Uh, so if we do summary of our data set, you know, we see the length of the data set, we see um, the different quartiles for each column. Um, and then we, um, it's kind of nice to see the NAs as well, uh, the min and the max, all of that good stuff. So if you're really trying to get a rough snapshot summary is, is one that I use a lot. Okay, so let's open up another data set. Um, so this is the youth tobacco survey. Uh, so this is, um, you can use again, the JHUR package to read this in, um, but this is a table containing different year information, different state information, but basically trying to uh, get information about um, uh, teen tobacco use by age, by um, you know, different kinds of tobacco. So um, thinking about like quitting smoking or per the percent of people that are, are current users. Okay, so let's explore this data set a little bit. Uh, length and unique are really, again, really useful functions. Um, and so unique does what it sounds like. It's finding the unique values of a particular column. And so that can be really useful if you have a lot of repeated data. Let's say, you know, you have, you know, hundreds of entries for one state, but you want to know how many states you have. So we're pulling that out from the YTS data set. We're pulling out this location description column, which is in this case, the state and using this unique function. And so we're just looking at the top 10 results of, of this unique function with head. And we see that we have a bunch of different values here. Even if we were to see Arizona appear multiple times, it's only going to show us once. So unique combined with length is super useful. So if we say unique uh, YTS data set and location description, we get all of these values, but maybe we just want to count them. We want to know how many unique states we have. Um, so in this case, we have 50, but if we look up here, we have some of these national statistics. So maybe we are missing some states. So important to kind of think about both of them together. Okay, so table and dplyr are count are good ways to just get a sense of how, what is, what, what kind of counts of data do we have across specific categories? So if we're interested in, in, you know, seeing basically across different states, how many records we have, we would just take that column once again and use the table function on that. And so that's going to give us, you know, we've got 378 records from Alabama, 240 from Arizona, and so on. And that can kind of tell us, you know, what's the balance of our, of our data set. So we've got fewer from some states.
dplyr our count does something very similar. Um, back here, this is a vector of information and this is a tibble, so just slightly different output. But let's take our data set, we'll go ahead and pipe and use the count on the column that we're interested in and it does the same thing again, so counts by state. The cool thing about um, the dplyr count is you can really easily add other columns in there. So instead of just doing, you know, location description for state, let's say we want to add in, you know, what topic that information is on. So we can just add an additional column here. And now instead of it just being grouped by state, we see the counts are grouped by state and by the topic of the survey. So Instead of that 370 sum, we now see that they're broken down by, by topic. Okay, so let's go ahead and subset to some specific data. So let's say we wanna just, we, we have a really good idea what we wanna look at, but you know there's a lot going on here. So let's kind of pare it down a little bit. So let's use the filter function on the YTS data set. And we're going to just try to match some of these columns to specific, uh, specific values. So we want the measure description to be smoking status, gender, let's look at everybody, response should be current. So we don't want any old data and education level should be middle school. So we're really just looking at smoking status current among uh, middle schoolers. And so let's, so we've filtered the data set. So that's, we're, you know, kind of subsetting and we'll name it something different, the sub YTS. And let's just select a few things from that data set so we can kind of look at things pretty concisely. So let's select from the y, sub YTS year, location description, the data value, so how much actually for the, these, uh, these values, and then what, what unit the value is in. Um, and so we get a pretty nice, concise output from that. So just the year, the state, the, uh, the percentage um, of, of uh, students in middle school that are a current smoker, okay? And so we can kind of quickly see how much that varies by state. One really useful function that I think is pretty unique to dplyr and it doesn't have really an equivalent for data frames is the ability to do group by. And so this is interesting because it doesn't actually change the data, but it changes how future functions operate it. So if you want to go and do some means later, group by allows you to break it down by, by a group. And that's something that you can specify. So in this case, let's say we want to group this sub YTS data set. We want to group it by year. So we want to look at statistics across different years. Um, we now have this groups indicator right here. So nothing, nothing's done yet, but we'll see in the next step that actually that can be really helpful for looking across, you know, if we wanted to look at across different years. Okay. So our data is grouped, but let's go ahead and uh, take sub YTS, which is now being grouped and summarize it. We'll make a new column year average, and we'll take the mean of that percentage of, of middle school smokers, removing our NAs. And now instead of just getting one mean value for that, you know, that whole column, we can see it broken down by year. Um, so we can kind of track change over time, do a lot of useful things with this. Okay, and then this is where the pipe is really, really useful. So we're, you know, creating a new variable here, but first we're taking our data set and we're piping into group by. So we want to take a, you know, make a group for year. 
And then we want to use the pipe again to summarize. So we can kind of chain our, our commands that way. Um, and that's really, really useful for just making things compact. You don't have to repeat um, a lot of, you know, calling that data set over and over again. Okay. So in this case, we're, we're grouping by year and we're doing a yearly average of that um, data value and a median. Okay. And so this is giving us basically our, our yearly average for different years and our yearly median for, for different years as well. Okay, sometimes you might find you wanna ungroup. Um, if you were to perform a group by and then perform another one, the second one always takes precedence, but let's say you just, you know, you want some overall statistics again, you can use the ungroup function to do that. And as you can see, there's no, um, no group indicated in the tipple. So as before we had groups, now we don't have anything like that. So just taking a look at your data set can tell you if you, if you have a group already set. Okay, so super useful if you're not just trying to look at summary statistics, but you want to add a new column to your original data set, use group by and mutate together. So first taking our data set and then doing a group by year. And then we'll do a mutate to add a new column. So that is the new column will be called year average and we'll do the mean across the data value column. And so remember this is grouping by year. So this isn't overall, but it's by year. Okay, so we've added this new column and then let's do a quick arrange so that everything can be sorted um, by the state and by the year. So just a kind of nice to look at. Okay, so really nice. Um, that we have, we you know have some output for different years for different states. Um, the cool thing about this adding this new column is that it's repeating it actually for the different states. So we take a look at this this new column we added. Year average is twelve percent for two thousand. If we go down to Arizona, it's also this twelve percent. So we're kind of comparing each state to this global you know, yearly average. Um, so that can be really interesting for finding differences um, if, if that's something that you're pursuing. Okay, counting, sometimes important to know the number of observations that you have for different categories. You can do that pretty easily with the N function. So you're just, you know, finding N, the, the sample size. So if you wanna take your data set and group by, and then do some summary statistics to find the count. I'll just rename that column N and I'll, I'll add a mean in here as well. And then taking a look at that data, um, we have a column that shows how many observations we had, but then also what the mean is. And so remember that the mean removes data that is missing, but the N actually doesn't. So we don't have a NA.RM argument there. Um, and so maybe this mean was not calculated based on this sample size, but it does tell us how many observations, you know, lines of that we have in our data set. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump to the lab. Um, the next part of this lecture is actually, we're gonna make this optional. It's uh, largely about visualization and plotting, some kind of easy ways to get started on that, but we're gonna cover that in a subsequent lecture. Um, so this is mostly if you're like really dying to get started on some visualization, the last two questions of the lab will cover that. Um, and you can take a look at the um, few slides here for basic plots.